All right, so we're, we're, we're starting off our second session here. This is, it's tough to look at these kind of on your own and, and try and make sense of them. So let's, let's take a second here and, and try to get ourselves organized and make sure with problems like this, there are lots of calculation steps, which means that there are lots of places to make mistakes. And sometimes it is the simplest mistakes, the algebraic mistakes that can ultimately hurt us. So just to remind ourselves, to calculate the value of K, I'm going to need to take the concentration of nitrogen monoxide squared over the concentration of nitrogen and the concentration of oxygen. And I'm told that all of that is going to be equal to 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, the other thing that is easy to miss, but is important, is that this is a two liter tank holding all of this gas, not a one liter tank. So when I'm doing my initial concentrations, I've got to make sure that I take that into consideration also. So I've got nitrogen reacting with oxygen to make nitric oxide. And as I'm setting up my ice table, my initial concentration of nitrogen is going to be 0.25. because I have half of a mole in two liters. And my initial concentration of oxygen is going to be 0.43, because I have 0.86 moles in two liters. Initially, I have no nitrogen monoxide, so I can leave it at that. On the change line, I'm going to lose some nitrogen. I'm going to lose some oxygen. I'm going to gain some nitrogen monoxide twice as much as what the others lose. <coughs> so again, another little place where we can make a mistake. We can make a mistake here in the setting up of our equilibrium of expression. We can make a little mistake here with our concentrations. We can make a mistake in our change line not doing the stoichiometry correctly. So equilibrium 0.25 minus X for nitrogen, 0.43 minus X for oxygen, 2X for nitrogen monoxide. Now, I need to integrate that into this expression for K. So K is equal to 2X quantity squared. This was a mistake I saw a lot of people making was you square one of the terms or the other term, but not both. So I was seeing a lot of 2X squareds, like two times X squared. I was seeing a lot of four X's where you didn't square the X term also. Over 0.25 minus X and 0.43 minus X. And all of this is equal to not K, because uh, we actually know what the value of K is now. It's 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So this looks a lot like the first problem that we did, where we're going to have some sort of binomial expansion. We're going to have to apply the FOIL technique to the bottom of that fraction. We're going to have to solve 
get everything equal to zero and do a quadratic formula kind of thing. So numerator 4x squared. Denominator, we need to do the expansion. 0.25 times 0.43 is 0 0.1075. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to combine terms here. It's going to be negative 0.25 plus negative 0.43. So that's negative 0.68. And negative x times negative x is going to be positive x squared. If I continue with this, multiplying each side by the denominator, 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth, multiplied by 0 0.1075, um, will give me 4.4075 times 10 to the negative fifth. Point six eight times four times four point one times ten to the negative fourth is negative two point seven eight eight times ten to the negative fourth x plus 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. X squared equals four. X squared. The last step would be to subtract 4x squared from each side. So it's this all over again, 4.4075 times 10 to the negative fifth. Minus 2.788 times 10 to the negative fourth. x 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth minus four it's gonna be negative 3.99959 x squared which is all equal to zero I've got everything now. I can put it into my uh, quadratic formula solver. So A is equal to negative 3.99959. B is equal to negative. 2.788 times 10 to the negative fourth. C is equal to 4.4075 times 10 to the negative fifth. If I do that, I get 3.3 times 10 to the negative third as my result. Again, one of the answers always makes sense. One of them does not, the negative one does not obviously.
And so I should be able to go back, substitute in for X. So nitrogen monoxide would be two of those. So 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative third. Point four three minus three point three times ten to the negative third is with rounding going to be point four three again. Calculator says point four two six seven. Again, I can't make the value more precise than what it was to start, uh, so we'll have to keep it there. Point two five minus. 3.3 times 10 to the negative third. I get 0.2467, again, with rounding. That gets us to So for problems like this, you know, quadratic formula is generally the way to go. And I know it is, it is tedious and kind of difficult to use. Um, and that's one of the reasons why in this class, we have much less restrictive calculator um, rules than in other classes, because for some of the problems that we have to ask you to do, it's kind of hard to walk around um, just, you know, solving the quadratic formula on a scientific calculator. Um, and certainly we're not gonna let you just pull up your favorite um, calculation solver on your phone. That has its own host of problems as well. So um, you are allowed to use graphing calculators. Um, for this particular reason. And if you are, um, there are grapher um, programs out there. Um, if you don't have one on your calculator, um, stop downstairs um, and ask one of the guys in the learning lab. They should have a program that they can help you download um, that would put it into your programmable calculator and save you from having to go to the internet or to wherever to get um, to get results. Now, as far as quizzes and exams are concerned, um, chances are pretty good. This is about as complicated as they get. I'm actually gonna show you here a technique that for problems like this, will make it actually even easier to do. So let's take the problem that we were just working on. So we have nitrogen reacting with oxygen to make nitrogen monoxide. K value for that was equal to 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And we started with initial concentrations of 0 0.25 and 0 0.43. and zero. Now, one of the things that you probably noticed is that in a couple of these problems that we've done, the initial concentration of the reactants and the final concentration of the reactants have largely been effectively the same. We can take advantage of this. 
using something called the 5% approximation. If our lowest concentration multiplied by 5%, 0.05, is still considerably bigger than our value of K, then we can ignore those minus X terms and solve. Now, what does that do for us in this particular case? Well, with the 5% approximation, 0.25 times 0.05 is 1.25 times 10 to the minus second. Why is that significant? Well, that means that 5% of our lowest concentration is still nearly 100 times bigger than our K. So the chances of our value of X being very significant are relatively low. So when I look at solving out this ice table like we did, I'm still gonna approach it the exact same way. But when I go to put it into this expression, I'm going to apply the approximation if my pen will cooperate. And so what the approximation is, is this value here is about the same as this. The value of X is not going to be terribly large, so I can kind of remove it from the concentrations that are not going to change much because of it. Can't remove it from the numerator. Can't remove it from the numerator. It's going to be too significant. If I can remove it from the denominator terms. which means that 4.1 times 10 to the minus fourth is equal to 4x squared over whatever 0.25 times 0.43 is, 0.1075.
if I keep going with this, four point four zero seven five times ten to the negative fifth. is equal to 4x squared if I divide each side by 4 I'm going to round this number slightly because it's getting kind of ridiculous to copy uh, 1.109 1019 times 10 to the negative fifth is x squared. If I take the square root of each side to two significant figures, 3.3 times 10 to the negative third is x. And if that sounds familiar, that's because that's exactly what we got with the quadratic formula as well. So we cannot use the 5% approximation all of the time. If our K value is considerable, certainly if it's greater than one, but even if it is a low negative exponent, like negative two, negative three, we're gonna have to go through the quadratic in those cases. Hopefully some examples like what we saw where we had square term up, square term down, we can use some of those tricks to kind of bail us out of those. But if our K value is small and our initial concentrations are somewhat big by comparison, we can save ourselves a lot of time and a lot of headache by ignoring that negative X term and going through the 5% approximation. So I just wanted to point that one out to you before we uh, got too deep in anywhere else. So any questions about that second example that we just did, whether it's with the 5% or with the quadratic? All right, then let's turn our attention to your lab then. So I'm going to go back to And so what I pulled, I, I pulled this out of one of your experiments. Um, this is so some this is somebody's data. And what we are looking at here is how do I then turn what we did today in lecture to usable results from the lab? And so you were supposed to, as part of your kind of preparation for today, you were supposed to turn all of these absorbances into concentrations. And so how you would have done that is your absorbance should have gone in as your Y value. And then what I instructed most of you to do was take the absorbance and ignore this intercept term. Most of you had intercept terms that were pretty close to zero. Logically, that should make sense. Something that has zero concentration should absorb zero light. And so if you divided both sides by your slope, you should have gotten concentration values accordingly. So in this case, 0.043 divided by 
12,930 would be two, two significant figures, 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. Which mind you, that is the concentration of the complex. at equilibrium. So what you're doing in each of your cases with the information is you're setting up an ice table of sorts. Concentration of iron three plus thiocyanate ion in equilibrium with the thiocyanate iron three complex. And if you look in the data and results section, of, or excuse me, the analysis section, you'll see that basically what we have set up here are a series of ice tables that you're going to have to solve for each of those reacting mixtures. And so, your values are from what you already calculated. So for the iron, you did this calculation in one of the data tables. It was the concentration of the iron chloride multiplied by its volume diluted to 50 milliliters. And so you should have an initial concentration of 0 0.001 molar iron three plus. Now in the case of flask number two here, which is what we're looking at, we had 0 0.001 Double check that. Yes, 0 0.001 molar uh, thiocyanate ion, two milliliters of it, diluted up to 50. And so M2 there, 0 0.001 times two divided by 50 should have been four times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And initially speaking, you had no complex. Following the rules of ice tables that we laid out before, we know we were gonna lose some amount of iron, lose some amount of thiocyanate, gain, gain some amount of complex. So if we combine those all together, that's what we have at equilibrium. But the reality is we can actually do better than this because we calculated the concentration of this complex at equilibrium. So we know what X is. X in this particular case is 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. And since we know the value of X, we can use that to figure out these other equilibrium concentrations as well. Four times 10 to the negative fifth minus 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth is 3.67 times 10 to the negative fifth. 0 0.001 minus 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative sixth uh, to uh, three significant figures, 
is 9.97 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. So I've got equilibrium concentrations now. All that's left for me to do is convert them into a value of K. K is equal to the concentration of the complex over the concentration of the iron three and the concentration of the thiocyanate. So 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth over 9.97 times 10 to the negative fourth times 3.67 times 10 to the negative fifth. 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth divided by 9.97 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 3.67 times 10 to the negative fifth to two significant figures is 90. So the calculations you did last night basically are feeding into these ice tables. You did the calculations yesterday to determine the concentration of the iron initially. And since that concentration was constant through all five of the flasks, this value is going to be the same each time. You calculated the concentration of the thiocyanate. You plugged it in each time as you went. So you put in the new value for flask two, flask three, flask four, flask five, so on. And this value, what you did with the absorbance values to turn them into concentrations using that calibration plot. That's this bottom right corner value here. That's your value of X. So really all that you're missing, all that you need to do to complete that table is plug in the values one, two, three, and solve the ice table and use those values to figure out what K is. Because that's really all that's on this analysis sheet. Doing it for reaction two, three, four, five, and six, and then taking an average. And similarly, if we're looking at the pre-lab for this afternoon's experiment, that last question gives us the same kind of information. We start with 7.89 molar acetic acid, 7.89 molar propyl alcohol. At the end, we have 3.61 molar acetic acid remaining. So all we need to do there is again, set up our ice table, use the information that we're given to figure out what X is and apply it. So we've got about 90 minutes 
between now and when we're going to break for the, for midday. What I would like us to do, uh, let's go over to the lab, and um, you can kind of spread out, you know, get with your partner and work on whatever pieces or parts that you want to. Technically, this is time for the uh, the uh, equilibrium skill builder. Um, so you can use that time. You can work with somebody to um, get that stuff done as well. Um, what I will do is very similar to what I did uh, for the last one. I will post the key for this particular skill builder on Blackboard this evening so that you can use it as a study guide to get you ready for tomorrow's quiz over equilibrium. Um, but you'll still be responsible for turning in the skill builder completely filled and finished by the Monday deadline. Before we head over, though, um, let's get you one more point. Um, for this chapter. And then uh, we'll head over next door.